Hi, welcome to Computing 120 Binary Search, Recursive Algorithms and Sorting Algorithms Practice Question Solutions. In this video, I'll be going over all 17 questions and explaining the solutions for each one of them. The code above shows the beginning of a binary search algorithm. Why is there a condition first is less than, less than or equal to last in the while loop? So to recap what a binary search is, we have a list of sorted uh, sorted integers in a list and then all we're doing is we're splitting down the half taking a look at the element and then we're eliminating half of the list at every single time so we have two pointers here actually this is what we call them first and last or we could call them left and right whichever one you prefer that gives us a possible bound of where our elements could lie within so let's take a look at an example list one two two three four six and ten let's say that i was looking for two maybe this one then what i would do is i would split the list down into the middle so let's take a look at three now so you check this but then we see that three is greater than two so we eliminate this half of the list notice my first was here i'm going to let the red marker be first and then last is going to be green and when I eliminated the half of the list, last actually moved here. So each iteration of the while loop, what I'm doing is I'm actually changing my pointers. But notice, let's take a look at our answer choices now. If first is greater than last, then we know that the element does exist. Nope. If the element did exist, we would have already broken in the for loop. If first is greater than last, we know that the element doesn't exist as we have scanned the whole array. This is the correct option. As if last is greater than first, that means that we're done with scanning the entire list. The condition is incorrect. There's a syntax error. When we have and not, what this means is we're reversing the Boolean expression of found. So this is incorrect as well. So our correct answer is B. Question two, easy slash medium. The time complexity of binary search is log n. This is true and I'll explain why later on. In a worst case scenario, the time complexity of binary search is O, o of n. This is false. The base of logarithm is E, computer scientist. This is also false. This last question explains why all of this is true. This is actually true as well. Let's take a look at how binary search actually works. If we have one, two, two, three, four, five, and 10 again, what each iteration I'm eliminating half of the list. So what's happening is that it decreases exponentially and logarithms are actually related to exponents as you all know. So we know that each time it's decreasing by a factor of one over two. So this last one is true. The first one is actually log base two of n, but we actually shorten it to log n here. And this O of n is not true since what binary search actually does, as I've said it before, is to eliminate half of the list every time instead of linearly searching through every one, each element of the list. So this word here, linearly traverse, is the word that makes this false. Question number three. The beginnings of a binary search algorithm in a midpoint is defined. What is the value of that midpoint? So. The midpoint is the halfway point between my first and then the last. I explained in question one what these two variables represent. The correct answer here would be A, and let me explain why. If I have two pointers, let's say in this example once again, let's say that the pointer was here and here. I need to find where the midpoint of the pointer is, and then the middle value would be here. What I did was I found the average of these two pointers. And to find the average, what I have to do is to add the first and then the last and divide it all together by two. Notice this is integer division and not regular division because integer div because if we do regular division, we may get decimal numbers, which is not allowed with indexes and in lists. If the B choice B is incorrect because we need to add them together before we divide by or order of operations, C is incorrect as I've explained, and D is incorrect since we there's no reason to add one. Let's take a look at question number four. This is the beginning of a binary search algorithm. Fill in the blanks with the appropriate variables. So the correct answer for this would be first, oops, be first and then last like that. 
Oh, I believe that was actually, sorry, wrong way. The correct answer for this was last and then first, and let me explain why. If we have a list, let's say one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each time what we're doing is, as I said before, we're going to the middle element, taking a look at it. If the middle element is less than, we move the first counter or the first variable. Otherwise, we move the last one. So it, our two pointers were originally like that. And let's say that we're looking for the element five in the middle here. What I would do is I need to move this pointer over here and get rid of all of this since we know that all of these elements is less than. So what I did was this three here was the midpoint and notice how I moved it to midpoint plus one. So the next element right after the midpoint. If this wasn't the case, I would have moved the last element or the last pointer one before. So notice how I'm using minus one and plus one here. The following part of the binary search algorithm has been modified. This would still work because all we're doing is the same thing. I just switched around the ifs conditional statement and notice how first is still being assigned to plus one while last is being assigned to minus one. This is the key point. Make sure to remember that first corresponds to plus one and last corresponds to minus one. Question number six, suppose you have recursive blah, 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 blah. Binary search algorithm. So what we would do is we take a look at the middle element, which is, I believe it's 11. So we take a look at key number 11. So we see that 11 is greater than, so we eliminate all of these elements over here. And then let's do that one more time. We take a look at the middle number, which is five. This is less than, so we eliminate this half of the binary search algorithm. And then we're finally in the middle, so six, and then finally eight. So correct answer is A. The textbook actually says it's B, and I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Question number seven, easy, an alternative to binary search is, so what binary, the whole purpose of binary search is to actually find an element within a list. Let's take a look at which one of these does that. Selection, so we can get rid of the sorting algorithms immediately because notice what sorting algorithm actually does it, we don't actually find anything. So we need to actually search for something and therefore B is the correct answer. Question number eight asks us the above code recursively, notice how it says recursively, binary search algorithm attempted by a student, does the code work or not? So notice that there's no returning false here. So we're always going to return true somehow. So the indication that we never return false is that this code doesn't work. So we can get rid of these two ones and we're left with C and D. The code does not work as there is no base case of recursive algorithm as it does not move towards the base case. So two different wordings here. You have to be very careful. Notice <clears throat> my recursive algorithm is actually moving towards the base case. We're actually splitting the list in half each and every time. So choice D is out and we're left with choice C. Question nine, the difference between recursive and regular version. So there is no, nope, there's clearly a difference between these two algorithms. As we've seen from the previous question, it does use variables. Look at midpoint, that's a variable. So this is also false. Um, choice number D, more efficient. Nope, they have the same time complexity, which leaves us with choice A. Notice here, I'm actually not keeping the value. I'm using list slicing so that I'm throwing away the other half each and every time. Question number 10 will not be covered. Question 11, are the following statements true or false? Must have a base case, always the case. If statements, we don't necessarily need to have if statements. Think of the factorial example, define factorial of n. Each time what we're doing is we're returning n times factorial of n minus one, and then we have the base case if, but this doesn't always have to be the case. So this is false. A recursive algorithm will sometimes reach the base case. Nope, it always has to reach the base case must always call itself for any input. No, this is not the case. Notice for factorial, if n is equal to one, then we return something. We never call factorial once again. So this is false. A recursive algorithm will, will eventually return a value. This is also true. Question 12. This question is actually a very tricky question. Notice the keyword here, integer. Integer represents negative numbers as well. So, 
will not work for any negative values. Let's say I have negative one. If I have negative one, it'll loop in an infinite recursive loop. So it is not moving towards the base case. This is actually kind of false because if we have n is greater than zero, it is moving towards the base case. It does not return an integer value. It returns an integer value for n is greater than zero. So therefore the answer is D. Question 13, the following code will always return. So notice how else, so if none of these conditions is true, I'm always going to be adding to my X variable. That's the key point here. So each and every iteration I'm adding to my X. So X is gonna get greater and greater and greater. But notice here I have, if X is greater than or equal to the keyword is equal to. So this elif statement would never be caught actually, because if X is in D10, it'll always return false. So for any value of X, we're always going to be returning false. Notice the answer choice C here is actually wrong because if I have, let's say X is 10, it'll immediately return false. How many recursive calls are made? So when we're computing the sum of a list recursively, we take the current element and then we find the sum of the remaining elements. So we have one call, two call, three calls, four calls, and then finally five. So our answer is B or five. Question 15, the time complexity. So we're analyzing time complexity here. Notice for each recursive call, what are we doing? For each call, we're actually making two calls. So this actually grows exponentially. The log here would be wrong because we're not getting rid of something. We're actually increasing something. So therefore LN would be wrong as well. N squared, this is kind of tricky. This would also be wrong as well. Let's take a look at a tree. Let's say that we're trying to find um, G of four. What G of four would turn into is G of three. And we're also looking to find G of three as well. But then look, G of three breaks down into G of two once again. So each time it's growing by a factor of two and not we're not squaring it. So therefore D is our correct answer. Question number 16, this is a very hard question. So if X is, what this function, the purpose of this function is to generate all binary numbers. And recall that a binary number is just any other number but represented by only zeros and ones. What we're doing each time is we're appending something to a list. So let's say that I'm passing. So what we want to find is binary generation of three with an empty list. Okay, let's try this out. So we're going to add one to our list. Okay, so I have just one in my list. Now I'm going to make a rec recursive call binary generation of X take away one, which is two, and then a list. So I have one in my list. Okay, so I'm going to call my function again but X is not zero, so I add one again, so it becomes one, one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another call. So I'm going to take away one from X, so X is now one, and then I'm going to call it again. So now I have one, one, one again. So I added one, and then I call my function once again. So now X is zero. So since X is zero, I'm going to append this to total. So total is now going to be a two to area with one, 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 and one. So this continues on and on and on, which ge recursively generates binary numbers. This question might be asked on the final because it's a combination of binary numbers and then recursive calls, which is, and then we're also using list aliases as well. So most people would think that B is the answer, but it's not the answer. <laughs> the correct answer would actually be A. Notice I'm not changing my variable name. It remains a list for all of them. So when I add it, the pointer is actually still pointing to a list. So if I pop it, it's actually going to remove this. So all of the work that I made will get removed over and over again. You can actually try this code out yourself and see what it prints out. And finally, the last question, def recursion variable is 10. If variable is greater than 11, it'll never go through this condition. Notice it'll always go to else because I'm resetting the value of variable each and every time. For each recur recursive call, variable is always going to be reset to 10. So it does not work, obviously. And the reason is this is an infinite recursive call. 
So it breaks one of the rules. So the correct answer is A. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.